Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Omega Man is an American post-apocalyptical action film. It was directed by Boris Sagal, and it stars Charles Heston in the lead role. The screenplay was written by John William Corrington and Joyce Corrington, and it was all based on a 1954 novel, I Am Legend, by Richard Matheson. The film's producer, Walter Seltzer, went on to work with Charlton Heston again in the science fiction film Soylent Green from 1973. I often have people ask me where I come up with the ideas for my videos, and they ask, do I run out of movies to choose from? And the answer is basically no, they are endless. But there are quite a few that I overlook or just don't get around to making. And this film falls into that category, even though it has a strong cult following. I had a checkup with my doctor this week, and he knows that I'm a YouTuber and that I love movies and TV. The first thing he asked me as he walked into the room was whether or not I had done a video on The Omega Man, which he stated was one of his favorite films of all time. I told him that I had thought about it. Even last week, I had thought about it. But sometimes it just takes an additional spur from someone else to point you in the direction of a good film. So hats off to my physician, Greg, for not letting me forget about this classic. This movie is the second adaptation of the original source novel. The first was called The Last Man on Earth from 1964, which starred Vincent Price. The third adaptation was I Am Legend, starring Will Smith, which was released in 2007. The storyline goes that two years after much of mankind was destroyed in a global war with biological weapons, Dr. Robert Neville leads a solitary existence in L.A. Those humans that do remain are pigmentless albino creatures that roam the night, destroying what remnants that may exist from the previous civilization. Neville, who has worked on an antidote to the virus, is one of their main targets, and by day he searches for their nest where they sleep. He comes across a small band of survivors, mostly children, but which does include two adults. Having injected himself with his experimental serum several years before, Neville, in fact, may carry the immunities needed to reverse the creature's conditions. The only question is whether he can survive their constant attacks long enough to prove it. The movie differs from the novel and the previous film in several ways. In the novel, humanity is destroyed by a bacterial plague by bats and mosquitoes, which turns the population into vampire-like creatures. Whereas in this film version, biological warfare is the cause of the plague that kills most of the population by asphyxiation and turns most of the rest into nocturnal albino mutants. The production company wanted a locale that looked like an abandoned metropolitan area, but it was just too costly to build the set themselves. The producer drove through downtown L.A. one weekend and discovered that there were no shoppers. So the majority of the film's exteriors were shot there on the weekends. I'm sure that area looks more apocalyptic now than it did back then. The facade set used for Neville's fortress home still stands relatively unchanged on the Warner Brothers Ranch Park Boulevard which was formerly Columbia Ranch, all this in Burbank. Charlton Heston had read the original novel on a plane coming back to L.A. and was very interested in a modern adaptation of the book. He was totally unaware of the fact that there had already been a film made years before that starred Vincent Price. The eight-track that Neville plays in his car 
in the opening sequence is clearly Sinatra's Strangers in the Night. But presumably, due to the licensing issues, an instrumental version of Summer Place is used on the soundtrack instead. Now, there were two scenes that were completely deleted prior to the theatrical release of the movie, a scene in which Lisa visits the gravesite of her parents and hears crying from a nearby crypt. Entering the crypt, she finds a female member of the family holding her stillborn baby. Armed with a machine gun, Lisa considers killing the mother, but she turns and leaves instead. In another deleted scene, immediately following this one, she tells Neville about the incident that just happened, whereupon he asks her if she took care of her. Lisa tells Neville that she couldn't do it, as she reveals that she's pregnant with his child. Charlton Heston's own personal diary entries while he was making this film, he noted that he was beginning to tire of the action hero roles that he has always played at this point in his career. The scene in which Heston's character watches the film Woodstock inspired Joel Hodgson to create Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is a popular science fiction comedy film review television series that started in 1988. Over the years, it's been shown on the comedy channels, sci-fi channels, and also on Netflix. Now, Charlton Heston has stated that his co-star, Rosalind Cash, had difficulties while she was acting with him. She was new at the business, so he tried to take her and talk to her very quietly and confessed that he also had difficulties when he was playing his role in Ben-Hur. The writers came up with the idea to make Neville's love interest an African-American woman, even though at that time interracial relationships was still considered controversial and was a no-no. They slipped past this idea strictly because, with all of humanity being extinct except for a few survivors, no one would really care about issues such as that. But it still was shocking to audiences at the time. Rosalind Cash, in playing this role, was really uneasy before her love scenes with Charlton Heston, saying that it really feels strange to make love to Moses. And supposedly, this kiss between the two was the first interracial kiss that appears in a movie. Go back and take a look at this film that may have been missed by many people, but I think you'll find that you'll be glad you watched it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.